Hi, this is things that you need in your child's violin case or in your own violin case if you're older and watching this as a student. The first thing you need is rosin. You need rosin to go on your bow. Okay, you need to rub it on your bow quite often, at least twice a week, usually if you're practicing every day, which you should be. Now, my rosin is really, really expensive. Okay, I buy very, very posh rosin to play in orchestras and string quartets. And this rosin costs about 20 pounds. I don't think you need that one. But you do need to get some rosin. It comes in all different colors. The one I just showed you is black rosin, which is a bit stickier and tackier. So a lot of players like it because it sticks to the strings. You can also get, this is a little tiny bit left in this box here, you can get orange rosin. This is a broken piece, but I can still use that bit because it's one solid block. If you have any bits that have cracked off the rosin, then throw those away. It's incredibly sticky, so mums and dads, aunties, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, just beware that rosin is very sticky, so try not to let uh, your loved one drop it on the floor. Um, this is a cheaper version of rosin. It usually comes in a case, so you can hold the side of the case while you rosin the bow. Um, here's another type, which is also a cheaper type and has like a bit of cork around it. Okay, it actually comes from uh, trees and plants, certain, certain types. You can research it more on um, the internet. So when you come to rosin your bow or your child's bow, you need to um, try and cover the metal piece at the bottom with your thumb so that when you're rosining, you don't crash the rosin into the metal piece because that will split it and it will break. Okay, so we put it on the bow and we slide the rosin up and down. Now it's important that we coat the whole of the hair of the bow. So we're trying to make sure that the, the solid block of rosin transfers from the friction, from the movement, into a powder that goes onto the bow. This is really, really important because without it, the bow doesn't work at all. It literally makes no sound. So if you buy a new bow and it comes with no rosin on at all, try and play it on your violin and no sound will come out. I quite like that trick. I like to trick people with that. I go, oh, your bow doesn't work, oh no. But it's just that it hasn't got any rosin on. Ha <laughs> ha. Right, so that's that. So when you've rosined your bow and you've played on your violin, the rosin comes off the violin, onto the strings and onto the wood of the violin. And it's really, really bad for the violin. It's really bad for the wood, it's really bad for the strings. With the strings, it basically corrodes the metal and makes, it, makes them perish quicker. So you also need in your case one of these. Now this is a very dirty duster because I use it to clean various bits of my violin with. I've got a nice new clean one here. You can buy these from most supermarkets in a pack. You don't have to have one this big. So the smaller version is fine. But I find the yellow dusters are the best. So they're a bit old fashioned. Don't put them in your washing machine because your, all your wipes will turn yellow and worse. Um, but what you do is you get your duster and with no polish and no chemicals and no liquids at all, just a dry duster, that's all you need, you carefully rub the strings, okay? If it's really coated with rosin, if it's, it's coated on and this duster's not getting off, use a tiny bit of your nail just to gently scrape the string, scrape it off. It might make a bit of a horrible sound sometimes, but it's just what we do. The next thing is to, to clean the wood off because rosin also eats away at the wood and it, with time, if you haven't cleaned the rosin off, it will go black, the wood will just turn black and you can't then make it turn back into nice looking wood. The main places to take the rosin off is underneath the strings here where you play because it collects there. But make sure that you know that it also will go underneath the fingerboard like this, that will get covered with rosin. So you need to clean off basically the whole instrument and even under the tail piece from time to time will get dusty. Um, it's good to keep the wood nice and clean because it, not only does it look nicer, but it should sound better too if it's clean. Again, don't use any polish at all on anything. There are violin polishes, but um, 
certainly for more expensive violins they're not always recommended so for a very expensive violin like mine I take it to my luthier who is a violin repairer and restorer and he will clean it for me uh, with special violin cleaning stuff that he's got and he's an expert at it so I know that it's in really really good hands okay and those are the things that you need in your violin case and how to use them you also need a pencil and a rubber Ah, my rubber's gone missing. Those of you who know me well will know that my rubbers are always going missing and my pencils too. But I have a pencil here now and it's a 2B pencil. 2B pencils are the best pencil for writing in music because it's easy to rub out. You must never, ever, ever use pen, okay? Unless you have a photocopy or unless you're putting highlighter into your music because you want to colour coat things. That's a bit different. But the rule is generally we use pencil and in orchestra we're only allowed to use pencil too so that we can rub things out and change things. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. See you soon.